code and or for the operating system. There's uh, the core boot tables, which is uh, our own um, table format for uh, providing information about the system. Stuff like memory, um, how much memory is installed and how it is configured and what memory regions are used by, um, by, uh, by whom and what memory regions are available for use by the operating system or, or payloads. ACPI tables, if the particular board supports them, MP table for interrupt routing and PIRQ table for interrupt routing as well. DMA, uh, sorry, not DMA, DMI, with the information uh, about this firmware if, if there is one or maybe about the particular system even. And final step, jump to payload and then core boot is, is finished. So uh, what's, what's the recommended uh, procedure for getting a new board to run Core Boot? This is what we suggest. Find a similar board, which is already supported by Core Boot. Just build uh, the firmware for that, flash it onto the board, and see if it works. Sometimes it actually does work. Um, of course, if it doesn't work, you need a good way to recover. So don't forget to have an, an extra flash chip or um, um, maybe a ROM emulator, even uh, uh, that's even better. So for, for this to, to have any sort of chance at success, you need uh, the CPU and the North Bridge and the South Bridge and the Super I.O. to really be the same as the other board. But many times they are because all the vendors, uh, they, they have reference designs and uh, many mainboard uh, designs are really just uh, copies of the reference design with a few small variations and uh, that means you get lucky, uh, you can get lucky and it's really easy to add a new board. Next step in, um, in this saga is to update the device tree.cb file uh, wherever it is in the, the source main board vendor board subdirectory to, to reflect uh, this particular board, this particular PCB design. So how are things connected together? What, uh, uh, what PCI addresses or device IDs do the different devices have? That's also where you change the um, Super I.O. If, if there's a different one. And the Super I.O. Is, is pretty easy to just replace. Uh, you have to say, okay, this board is using not the ITE uh, 8712, but the 8716 or something, and then it might just work. First step is, is to get serial output going. That's, um, it's, it's just uh, really painful to try to debug without having that. And uh, worst case, you have to add some new code in, uh, uh, for the CPU support or the Northbridge support, maybe in the memory controller. Uh, if uh, this board has a new CPU or, uh, well, not a brand new CPU, but at least a, a same family, but a new revision maybe, there are some changes that need to be made. Or you're using some RAM type which wasn't already supported by the RAM initialization code. That might need to go into, uh, into the code base somewhere to properly set up. Then set up the, or, or create an interrupt the routing table also goes into source mainboard. Start with a PIRQ table. It's possible to read that with one of the utilities uh, called getpeer, I think. Uh, you can read that out from the BIOS, the factory BIOS, but sometimes, uh, oftentimes, it's not really uh, correct, so you might have to do some manual, uh, manual fix up because most operating systems today, if they find ACPI tables, they're going to ignore this PIRQ table. So the BIOS vendors, they don't bother uh, making sure that the PIRQ table is correct. They just focus on ACPI and, and um, um, keep the, I guess, the old copy-paste PIRQ table in there. But PIRQ is, is a lot simpler than ACPI, so it's a good idea to start there and um, uh, then deal with ACPI later. When everything looks like it's, uh, it's in good order, you uh, uh, add a call to this RAM check uh, function in Coreboot to, uh, it's a really simple test. It's, 
I guess, even more simple than the factory BIOS uh, RAM tests, if, if that's possible. Uh, but it's, it's still it's a way to see if, if the RAM seems to be in working order. And the next, the final step, of course, is to get the payload uh, started and then get it to, to function. Uh, Memtest 86 is, is really what you should start, uh, start with and, and make sure that the RAM configuration is, is solid. Now, if you didn't need to do any, any of this code addition over uh, for the RAM controller, then Memtest 86 might, might just run fine the first time. But certainly, if you're adding or changing uh, some of the code in, uh, for the RAM controller or the memory controller, then uh, it's important to do thorough testing so that uh, you squash any bugs that might, might remain. It's actually fairly frequent to make it all the way, well, at all the way to RAM check and sometimes also even past RAM check without RAM actually working properly. So um, sometimes we, we, we get some mails on the list where uh, someone has tried to get uh, a payload or tried to, tried to boot a, a new board and it looks like core boot is doing everything uh, okay and, and core boot is, is good but the payload doesn't work and, or doesn't start. And th that usually indicates a RAM problem because um, there's a lot, of, um, uh, a lot of caching going on and it, it could be that all the code is, is, is running from cache so that uh, there wasn't any need for RAM until the point where the payload is, is supposed to be started. And then it blows up. So, yeah. It's memory com um, setting up the memory controller again is, is by far the, the biggest problem. And um, okay, moving on to what has happened in, in 2009. In Core Boot itself, finally, um, it, it turned out that the version 3 code base, which was um, pretty much started in 2006 in Hamburg, it, it really doesn't um, receive any any development uh, attention or developer attention anymore. It's, um, it's slowed down, no one's really working on it, but it's still there. And uh, starting out with the version 3, we, we focused on the GeoLX because we considered it a, a simple platform to start with. And that means uh, that version 3 really has the best, ver um, the best support for the AMD GeoLX. So, uh, and there are several users who have uh, Geode LX designs and Geode LX products that are using version 3. So it's, it's not a, a waste at all, but it turned out that it would uh, probably be a better idea and in any case easier to uh, pick up the old version 2 code and, and try to move it forward instead of starting from scratch. So the work on the version 2 code continues and now we just call it trunk. Yeah, I think there's a version 4, uh, a version number 4 committed somewhere in, in some define, uh, but uh, it's not officially version 4 just yet. And we want to, to take all the good stuff that we came up with for version 3 and put it into the, 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 uh, the trunk. So kconfig, I already talked about that. I, I think it's really important because the old configuration and, and build system just wasn't really pleasant and um, it helps a lot to have this, this familiar interface when, um, when you're starting out. And I personally, I think it's really convenient as well. Another big deal, big improvement from the old version two uh, structure is uh, what is called LAR in version 3 and the same concept is called CBFS in um, the current current source. So LAR is short for Linux BIOS Archive uh, and uh, as you may know, Core Boot was called Linux BIOS earlier but we changed the name last year because, well, it wasn't, it was meant to be Linux always but it wasn't Linux always and it's certainly not a BIOS. So. Um, we, we thought we, we should go with a better name. We renamed large to little archive uh, at the same time.